Hi, I'm Britt. And my name is Alyssa. And this is Skella Tales. And this is the podcast where we strive to answer the age-old question of, is my dead grandma watching me? Have you heard that new song that just came out with uh, Keith Urban and John Legend? No. You haven't heard it? I haven't. Must be an urban legend. Oh, that's Ah! good. That was Ah! good. Yeah, (laughs) I'm getting it. (laughs) Are we going right into it? What are we talking about today? (laughs) We're talking about freaking urban legends. That was my Keith Urban. (laughs) I was so prepared to not like laugh or register. I was like, let's see if I can pull up anything to save this (laughs) intro. Hey, you put that phone away. Episode saved. You're welcome. (laughs) Alyssa, do we just talk about (laughs) Keith Urban and John Legend on this podcast? That this is a first, I gotta say. (laughs) Maybe we should more. I I literally know zero things about them except they sing. The end. Yep, that's it. I don't even know what they sing. We tell true tales of the strange, unusual, and paranormal, and mysterious. But yes, this week we are telling, I guess, urban legends or like lore, right? Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. even, I should look up the definition Mine's of Mine's straight up some legend. urban legend. Yeah. Ooh. So Brett, get ready for this. This is a story that apparently was a urban legend in Rochester, New York, where I grew up, and I never Ooh. even heard it. Um, but there was like a Bigfoot. What, what the way it was framed was is the Bigfoot of Rochester or Western New York. And you never something. heard of it? Never heard of it. But I, yeah, I'd never heard of the hairy women of Klipnaki. <laughs> Plip, Plip, Klipnaki. <laughs> the hairy woman, women of Klipnaki. So there's I, more than one. Yes, it's actually a little south of. Rochester. I had to look up it on a map. But the hairy up. women of Kliplockledney. No, the hairy women of Klipnaki. Obviously, I'm not familiar with this town, but yes, the hairy women. I am so ready for this. Okay, so around 75 years ago, a young couple lived up in Klipnaki with their three daughters. They were simple people. No, simple minded, mind you. Wait. Does that make it sound better? What is that? That sounds like a simple dig. minded means they dumb. Yeah, like simple. It, simple just means they live frugally. I think. Right, like but you would think the they would be like they're simple people. They would be like, no, they, no, they're not simple minded. They're <laughs> they, simple. They people. would go the other the way. Other way. <laughs> they're like they're not just to be clear. Simple people. They dumb. <laughs> Maybe they forgot the T and they're saying not simple minded. Mind you. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. We will find out. How simple-minded they are. They just lived a very simple life on their little farm with none of the amenities that we all take for granted these days. So they did not have a telephone. One day, the parents decided to go to Arkport. They felt their daughters were old enough to stay home on their own for the day. Before they left, they gave the girls instructions on what to do in case someone came to rob the place or something bad happened. They told the girls they were to run right out the back door and stay hidden in the woods in a certain place they all knew until either their mom or dad came back to get them. When the parents were about halfway to Arkport, There was a terrible accident, and they both were killed. At the same time, a chimney fire had set their home ablaze. The three girls did just as they had been told. They ran out the back door and hid in the woods. The house had burned right down by the time anyone showed up, and everyone thought the girls had died in the fire. It wasn't too much time after that all happened when farmers would leave their lunch in a cool, shady spot on the edge of the woods while they were doing hay, and when they went to eat it at noon, it would be gone. Then, clothing started disappearing from clotheslines. There is still an old-timer in Canisaraga who can tell you how, when he was a kid, he had ridden along with his dad when he had to drive up through Klipnaki to check the roads in late spring to see what would need to be repaired after the winter snow and spring rains. They ate lunch in the truck. 
He says he never liked the crust on a sandwich, and if he had been at home with his mother, she would have made him eat it. But his dad said, what mother doesn't know won't bother her. He threw the crust out the window. He said that no sooner had the crust hit the ground than some crazy looking girl with long tangled hair that had leaves and burrs all knotted up in it came out of the woods, snatched up the crust and was gone all in the blink of an eye. Are those three poor girls still waiting in the woods for their parents to come for them? I don't know, but I have been hiking and camping in Klipnaki, and I've heard other people talk about the woods up in Klipnaki. It's enough to make you wonder. Ooh, I was expecting um, like Bigfoot type. So I, it has progressed to that where people oh. get glimpses of this hairy woman. And I think... In the imagination, it has like this was the origins of the story. Yeah. This was, that was written by a woman named Ruth Bancroft, by the way. I mean, if you think about it, if they've never had a razor or tweezer in their life or haircut, I'd be pretty hairy. They'd be pretty damn hairy. Yeah, yeah. I'd be the hairy woman of Fairport. I'm picturing the girls from the ring, but like big yes. giant versions of them. There's a historical marker. And this one says, a hairy legend, first sighted August 18th, 1926, hairy women of Klipnaki, once young girls, inhabit this forest, waiting for their parents' return. Nice! Klipnaki State Forest is where they're sighted. And the folklore includes stories about a race of Bigfoot-like creatures known as the hairy women of Klipnaki. What is certain is that Klipnaki State Forest occupies some extremely rocky and remote country where Bigfoot-like creatures would likely thrive. So it's turned from this like little girls who are at their house, their cabin. To like large Bigfoot-like women. <laughs> but do you think like they just got real beefcake living out in the woods. Do you think they're how 1926? I mean, if you're eating like they probably just catch a squirrel out of a tree and eat it raw. If you're living in the wild, they're not probably knowing. all Nell like, like chicka pay, chicka pay, <laughs> chicka pay. She That's was a little bit of a waif though. These are like yeah. some hairy, beefy ladies. They went all out. Like, it's like me out in the forest without a razor. <laughs> uh, dude yeah what you would really be the hairy lady of Klipnaki. i'm telling you i didn't realize yes. i'd be like it's me your baby i'd be like the baby hairy lady of Klipnaki. <laughs> it's, it's the hairy lady and her little daughter and her baby. <laughs> she, her baby. <laughs> um, um but uh i tried to do more research into this but like all of the links everywhere deleted every article about it deleted 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 which is sus that's why i was like really like tell me more everyone's like it's a big foot like creature i don't know because they're what what are they hiding i don't know this is fascinating do you think this makes me this makes me think that they're actually out there although at this point they'd be over 100 years old so there, well, does Bigfoots ever die? No, Bigfoots never die. So that was it. That was it. I can't find anything else. I don't know. I don't know who's Beautiful. seen the hairy ladies. I've never heard of it. I did never make it its way up to Fairport. But if you have but- ever seen the hairy ladies of Klipnaki, <laughs> please, please let us know. Or, yeah, because I need to know more. Absolutely. Or I mean, at this point, come across a bony corpse of a very hairy lady in the woods. Well, you would think. That's a long time ago. But they just ran away and never like, like, I do kind of feel like there were just some children living in the woods, possibly. That's why they had to preface at the beginning of the article, simple people. They were simple, simple people. Minded. I really think that was a. <laughs> I really think that was a typo now. But they don't give <laughs> names. They don't give any like. It's just very vague, which I think is the whole deal mm. with urban legends. Urban legends. They went okay. out. Maybe they got rabies. 
and they survived. Oh, and it and mutated now, them into and huge and creatures. hairy and living forever. Yes. I love it. Love it. Good okay. story. Good Let, story. Tell me a legend, Britt. I'm going to I'm buckle up. I'm going to tell you a legend. Cracking knuckles. Here we go. This urban legend took hold in the 1970s in Staten Island, New York. Keeping with your New York theme, oh, just yeah. for you. This is the legend of Cropsy. Okay, imagine a crackling fire. We're sitting around okay. it. Legend has it that in Staten Island lurks an escaped patient from a mental asylum. He lives in the tunnel system that lies under the abandoned ruins of the old Seaview Hospital. This man brandishes a hook for a hand and has a face scarred and disfigured from burns. He roams the neighborhoods at night, hunting for unsuspecting children to abduct and dragged back down to his dark tunnel lair. His name is Cropsy, and he is always out there lurking in the shadows, waiting for his moment to snatch you. <gasps> this story was mainly told around campfires by older siblings and even parents who wanted to scare the shit out of children so they wouldn't stray too far from home or play recklessly next to the campfire. But the story takes a terrifying turn when, in the 1980s, young children actually began disappearing in Staten Island. <gasps> Turns out, Cropsy is fucking real. No. But his name isn't Cropsy. Yes, it is Andre Rand. Are <gasps> you ready for this? <laughs> Andre Rand worked as a janitor. Oh, it gets so much more horrifying. Works at a janit as a janitor at the Willowbrook State School in Staten Island, a place whose name alone has the power to frighten adults and children alike. The institute, built as a respite for children with intellectual disabilities, was revealed to be a living hell in the 1970s, though they didn't even close the school until 87. The children there had been subjected to rampant sexual abuse, oh. corporal punishment, and severe overcrowding led to an unsanitary condition. It was also home to what has been called one of the most unethical medical experiments on children in the United States. In the name of hepatitis research, medical staff intentionally injected healthy children with the virus, many of whom became severely ill as a result. The public wasn't aware of the conditions inside the school, given that many of the children inside had sadly been abandoned by their parents in foster care system, leading to little accountability. In 1972, a young Geraldo Rivera <gasps> published an expose that revealed the horrific conditions inside the Willowbrook State School and ignited a national scandal. The school was officially closed 15 years later. So exposed the school for all the shit they were doing, and they still remained open for 15 years. Insanity. That same year, Andre Rand, former janitor of the School of Horrors, was arrested in connection with the disappearance of Jen Jennifer Schweiger, a 12-year-old girl with Down syndrome. At the time, Rand was homeless and living in a makeshift campsite on the grounds of an abandoned school, not far from the ruinous seaweed hospital that was closely tied to that legend. Over a month after her disappearance, searchers found Jennifer's body in a shallow grave on the desolate school grounds where the drifter was living. Rand was charged with murder. Rand had already had a long rap sheet of crimes against children. In 1969, he was sentenced to 16 months in jail for the attempted sexual assault of a nine-year-old. In 83, he went to jail again 
This is insane. After kidnapping a bus full of children from a local YMCA and driving them to the airport. What? There wasn't enough physical evidence to charge him, though, for this murder. And police suspected him in the disappearances of at least four other Staten Islanders going back more than a decade. There was... Alice, who disappeared in 1972. Holly, who was seven, who disappeared in 1981. There was 11-year-old Tia Hees, who disappeared in 83. Hank, a 22-year-old who was last seen with Rand in 1984. And to this day, none of the bodies have been found. They didn't have enough evidence to convict him for Jennifer's murder, but he was sentenced to 25 years for kidnapping. He would have been eligible for, for, for parole in 2008, but in 2004, thank God, new evidence came to light linking him to the disappearance of Holly Ann Hughes, and he was sentenced to 25 more years. He will not be eligible for parole until 2037, when he will be 93 years old. Oh, my God. That's terrible. Piece He's a real-life monster. Real-life monster. It, we don't usually talk a whole lot about, like, murderous no, ab- child abductors. That's terrifying. That is terrifying True that the urban, urban legend. legend was real. Like, that's... I mean, no, I guess that's kind of no maybe hooked hand that. or like mutilated face, but still like cropsy. What? That's such a terrible name. <laughs> no. It reminded me both of it, like the um, the clown from It lurking in the sewers Tunnels, and stealing yes. children. And then I did see, or I Geraldo's uh, expose. I feel like I've seen bits and pieces of that, or scenes of that. Either that, or like horror in like Chernobyl. Gosh, I can't remember. What a horrific scene! Giving children hepatitis for the sake of research. Monsters. Monsters. And then they stayed open. Like, oh, they stayed open after everybody knew that they were shit bags, and they stayed open. And people think those are the good old days, right? Like. Mm. Not the good ideas. Mm, no, not everything was so good. You, you, yeah, there was a lot of fucked up shit going on like that. Oh, that's terrible. Alyssa. Yes. Do you, my love? pray tell, have another legend for us tonight? I do have a legend. And I have a couple of legends from Denver, mm. Mm. Colorado. Our old stomping grounds. This is from 5280. 5280 decided oh, to ask. Magazine. Yes, 5280, 5,280 feet is the elevation <laughs> of Denver, the mile high city, everybody. Mile high. Um, and so they asked their staffers about urban legends that they grew up with in the area. Okay, so this is called Blood in the Attic. So this is Knoxville, Tennessee. Sorry, the staffer is not from Denver. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this is Knoxville, Tennessee, in an old suburb in a house built in like the 1930s. My mom bought the place in 1992, and a few years later, when I was in fifth grade, I'm getting dropped off at home after a play date. And the mom said, oh, you live in the murder house? (laughs) And I was like, I live in that house. And she's like, yeah, yeah, the murder house. (laughs) She didn't tell me what the fuck that meant. Only later... Did I learn the story? The daughter of the original owners died on the way to prom and the parents lost their minds. So the mom locked the father in the attic. That's why there was a fire escape down the side of the house and a bathroom without walls in the center of the attic. er The urban legend was that he haunted the place after he died. The coup de grace was that at my fifth grade birthday party, I took six friends up there to prove there's a toilet in the attic. So we grab flashlights and waddle through boxes and clutter. Finally, we get to the sink, look down, and we see what looked like dried blood splattered (gasps) in it, as though someone had thrown up blood. We all screamed. Oh my God. (laughs) Now that I'm an adult, I'm pretty sure the dried blood was just rust stains from a leaky faucet. But at the time, you wouldn't have been able to convince me otherwise. 
good one, Knoxville. I feel like very few people have urban legends about their own home. Oh, yes. <laughs> that that does not in. happen often. Oh, that's brilliant. Okay, so this one is called Hauntings of Riverdale Road. This one is in Colorado. Is it haunting, though? Is it a ghost or is it urban? But no, this is this is an urban legend because the hauntings of River, Riverdale Road. It's like oh, okay, okay, of oh, the place, of oh, the urban. Okay, yeah, got it, got it, got it's it. an urban the legend. Lore. Okay, gotcha. Okay, the lore. I'm ready. The hauntings of Riverdale Road. Somewhere down Riverdale Road in Thornton, this guy burnt down his house with his family in it and then <sighs> killed himself. People debated whether there was a fire, and it's like, no, yeah. There was a fire in 1975. So when I was a senior in high school, this was like 2016, I drove down the road in a truck with friends after the football game. We piped in a spooky playlist and ran down a checklist of things we're supposed to experience on Riverdale Road. So sorry. I'll wait for Britt to die. There'll be an urban legend about two podcasters and the one who kept buying spooky haunted objects from the thrift store until the haunted kerchief she purchased choked her. Oh, She's with a killing me. <laughs> and, a, and, and an eyeless statue of the Virgin Mary made her choke oh with a ker- kerchief. Uh, no, it's just it's lingering, damn cold. Okay, okay. I'm okay. so sorry. Okay. I'm so sorry. We piped in a spooky playlist and ran down a checklist of things we're supposed to experience on Riverdale Road. One, as you drive, you're supposed to hear tapping on your car window. <gasps> this is the haunted jogger of Riverdale Road. <laughs> editor's note. There's an editor's note in here. Like, now he's doing his job. And it says, the editor's note is... It is unclear how said jogger became haunted. Okay. Thanks, editor. Two, there's a phantom lady in white, which is creepy anywhere. Three, and if you see seven deer on your drive, you'll die. (sighs) Listen, it's a weird checklist my friends found, and I was scared. (laughs) (laughs) That was from Angelina Dinsmore. Oh. The research intern. She didn't talk about going down the road at all, just that that's the lore. No, I'm not sure. I'm a little disappointed in 5280s. um, That was a little anticlimactical. You know what? She is the research intern. So Mm. she researched, but like stopped. Yeah. Yeah. She's just an intern. You know, (laughs) give her a break. She's learning. She survived. Spoiler. She survived to tell the tale. The editor seems maybe no one wanted to speak to this editor editor because he seems like a real son of a gun. Comments, huh? Yeah, everything has like some commentary right in the middle. I mean, that's what we do too, but it's worse when he does it. So, this one's called Honk or Die. There's a 121 year old property in Chaffee County. I should know this. Chaffee. Uh Double F, double E, property in Chaffee County that was home to a man who sat near a window and waved at passing drivers. It's widely believed that not honking would give drivers bad luck, hence the average of 100 honks per day. Sean Parsons, the deputy art director, um, would often drive past this house, and every time he drove over Monarch Pass, he would always honk and wave at the yellow house. Otherwise, we'll fly off the edge of the cliff because I swear, the one time I didn't wave and honk, I spun out of control in my Chevy Cavalier. (gasps) Whoa! It it was an evening in 2006, and my then-girlfriend, now wife, was in the car with me. All the roads were completely dry the whole way home, but when we came around a tight corner past the ski area, I lost control. She was just screaming as we spun around, heading towards the cliff, so I accelerated onto the other side of the road into a snowbank. We were a foot away from hitting two other cars. It was terrifying. And five miles back was the yellow house I forgot to honk at. Oh, shit. That poor owner of the house. You know that old man died years ago. 
and they put that yellow house for sale and they were like we're just not going to tell these folks about it. They move in. It's like, oh, this beautiful mountain view. I love it. How gorgeous. What the fuck? Everyone's honking every day, morning, noon, night. Honk, honk, honk. Do you know how you solve that problem, though, Brett? How? You paint that fucking house. Paint it (gasps) pink, black. Just paint it another color other than yellow. People won't even know. They won't even know. They won't know. even know. They'll be like, oh, wait, yeah, where's They'll the They'll be too house? confused to even mm-hmm. remember the honk. They'll be like, they painted it. It's so true. Yeah. Oh, there good solution. All right, Yellow House people. Listen to Alyssa. Okay. that's. Do you have another story? Oh, I do. I have one more. Okay. Those were good. Well done, Denver. Yeah, there was of. one that was a good... It wasn't really Denver. It was It was good job, people <laughs> who moved to Denver. There was the one... <laughs> yeah, exactly. The one Thornton story that the Ravens oh, yeah. road. I mean that she didn't urban finish, legend which was real good and to, I mean maybe she died maybe she saw seven deer dead and that's why we just don't know and that's why she's only an intern because she's just a ghost <laughs> ghost, ghost you don't pay aren't ghosts um I'm gonna go I'm sticking with our New York theme what here what the fuck happened here the New York look at this vein. coincidence that's going on I know I know I know it's because people from New York are awesome we like to exaggerate and tell they, stories and that's where you all guys the fucking... love your legends yeah you love your legends like yeah we do um I got a lot of my information from the New York Times not sure if you've heard of it before oh that old rag I'm gonna start out with a little article for you Charles Gids of Duke Street is employed as superintendent in Kearney Street Department. He was clearing out a sewer on Friday when a workman called his attention to it. Oh, I need to do. What's your voice? That you, what's your new? What's your um, old timey newspaper voice? What's that one? Let's do. Oh, give me an example. Oh, so when I can, you're like, hey, hey, oh, hey, Stan, yeah, hey, it's news. me. It's uh, Charles. Uh, Charles, it's the news. He was clearing out a sewer Friday when a workman... I don't even know what this accent is. I think I need to just not do my newspaper accent. Okay, here we go. Are you doing newspaper or in New York? That's you got to decide. <laughs> it's like both. You've got to decide. Make, make a decision. Okay. Commit. Give me, give me some pointers on new, newspaper. News, newsy. Well, I think you're your yeah, old-timey voice when you're Johnny. Oh, Johnny. My, like, do that timey. sort of thing. Johnny. He That'll was clearing work. out a sewer on Friday. When a workman called his attention to a strange object in the water. Eh? Is that good? Nah. Gids picked it up, but suddenly dropped it with a yell. Ah! <laughs> workman then examined the object, which proved to be a young alligator, about 18 inches long. It had nipped Gids in the right hand, but inflicted little injury. It was learned later that the alligator had escaped a week ago from freeholder John Roach, who had... And who welcomed its return with many thanks. This is the New York urban legend of sewer alligators. Mm-hmm. Do you know about these? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. Is it famous? Yeah. Okay. The alligators great. Well, in the New York sewers. I mean, we didn't. I'm not from New York City, but I know. I, yeah, I think it's like on Futurama. It's it's in pop culture. It is something that truly is yes it's a trope me down in the slums of the south had never heard what you haven't oh no (laughs) so yeah i was pretty excited about it a lot of you i guess will just be relearning information you already know but anyways i'm going in i don't know if i know like the backstory but so the urban legend legend began in february of 1935 the time story reads Alligator found in uptown sewer. The piece recounted how some East Harlem teens were shoving, shoveling snow down a storm sewer when one of them noticed movement below. He peered into the darkness and was stunned by what he saw. Honest, it's an alligator, he proclaimed to his buddies. It's 1935, so that's why he sounded that way. The story did not end well at least for the animal. The boys lassoed the creature with clothesline, hauled it up to the street, and when it snapped its jaws, they killed it with their shovels. 
The carcass weighed 125 pounds and measured seven to eight feet long. They are big. They are vicious. Some say they are albinos because of lack of sunlight. They are the alligators that supposedly infest New York City's sewer system, slithering through the bowels just under street level, feeding on rats and rubbish and terrorizing sewer workers armed with guns for self-defense. That's the urban legend. These gators may be the city's most entrenched urban myth, one that has permeated pop culture and has become a recurring theme in books, television shows, and movies. And it has even become an official quasi-holiday in the city. February something is alligator in the sewer day. We should celebrate. (laughs) We could be celebrating this very second alligator in the sewer day. The tales are sort of true about these alligators. The city rescues several alligators a year, typically former pets that have been abandoned after having outgrown their cute phase. And I have to share (laughs) an article. No, it's not. It's an ad that was put in the newspaper in 1934. So this is before the Harlem boys even found the alligator. The ad says, live baby alligators, $1.50, safe delivery guaranteed. How would you like a real live baby alligator for your very own? A rage for baby alligator pets has swept the country. We have arranged at great expense to supply you with a genuine live baby alligator just hatched in the deep marshlands of the South. At an amazingly low price, these corking little pets will be shipped to you by mail, carefully packed, safe arrival guaranteed. Think of the fun, the thrills you will have with one of these baby alligators. (laughs) Read! Read how fascinating they are. How interesting. Study nature. Remember, the alligator comes down to us from prehistoric days, from the age of dinosaurs. Do you want a baby alligator? You bet you do. What boy wouldn't? Price, one fifty post paid. They were mail order alligators? So you mail order. <laughs> um... I mean, no foresight whatsoever. <laughs> the, the list that they have of things you could do with your baby alligator. I mean, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie. It kind of worked. I do want a baby alligator. For $1.50? $1.50. Cents I could put it in the pond. Paid. The boys will play with it. What a gas. Imagine the fun. Yeah. What a gas. <laughs> that was brilliant. Lucky for us now, it, it is illegal to own an alligator in New York State. Do I don't know, know about Washington, Washington State and Oregon State, though. I mean, let's research that. Let's I feel like Texas will allow it. Florida. Oh, Texas would for sure. <laughs> They're like, what rules? Um, so <clears throat> several TV shows, Leave it to Beaver, Ninja Turtles. What did you say? The Futurama have listed these sewer alligators. Books, news articles. In 1980, there was a horror comedy called alligator about a baby alligator purchased from the ad was flushed down the toilet and becomes a gigantic killer mutant gator after feeding on discarded lab rats (gasps) that were injected with growth hormones this giant alligator coming out of the sewer and like fighting the cities maybe that's what my hairy girls got into some lab rats Oh my God, totally lab rats. Okay. Why they're hairy, why they're huge, why they live forever. Oh my God. Yep. Lab rats for days. Same season. Same time period. Really? Totally. Lines up. Yes. Uh, Solved. Solved. Experts say the New York water in sewers is too cold and toxic for alligators to survive for very long, Mm -hmm. especially if they're only eating rats and raw sewage. So the myth is... Somewhat true in the sense that, yes, many alligators are found in the sewers, but false in the sense that there's like 
alligators attacking sewer people sewer workers and they're all like these white albino what? gators in the sewers wait are you telling More... me that mm-hmm. if i swallow a watermelon seed mm-hmm. a watermelon won't grow in my belly how do you think watermelon babies are made of oh. course it will oh, thank god. i, I literally just tonight told ellis because he accidentally swallowed a cherry pit i was like get ready for that cherry tree to come up your throat <laughs> I don't why every single time and literally every single time I chew gum there's that urban legend of like anytime you swallow gum it just sticks to your stomach lining and you're just piles and piles of gum in your gut I have heard that too I've also heard about the dingleberries that's what happens to them that's the bigger worry that the poo will dangle off your yeah yeah After eating gum, yes. Oh, because it'll just like yeah, stretch, yeah. Stretch. It like stretch. It makes you like poo all gummy. You get dingleberries. Uh, <laughs> I've not been warned of that. Have with you ever? The gum. Have, did, have you heard the word dingleberry before? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Oh, yeah. Wait. What what do you think a dingleberry is? What is your definition of dingleberry? Is it no? Not? I, in my okay. I was thinking, I was still on the seed train. I was like, how does like a watermelon seed give you dingleberries? Oh, God, God, and then God. I was, and then I was like, okay, gum. Gum. Okay. I get it. Okay. When I you just, can we talk about dingleberries more, please? I want one more thing. <laughs> Our elf on the shelf, do you know his name? Dingleberry. <laughs> it, it, close. Jingleberry. <laughs> oh, and do you do little like marshmallow dingleberries on his little booty no we're not no we don't do any of that shit low ex my, keep those expectations low my children have begged me to buy an elf on the shelf i refuse no absolutely not i will not because the name jingleberry's taken no can't think of a name <laughs> no i don't i don't want to bring a, a evil he's creepy moving around my house elf in No, I've got enough haunted objects. I agree. Thank you very much. I do not enjoy him either. He creeps me out. Maybe he can just like jangle, jangle himself outside and, you know, live there. Jingleberry hid in the trash can. (laughs) Darn, darn, darn. Jingleberry hid in the garbage disposal. (gasps) Jingleberry got flushed down the toilet to live with the alligators. There you go. Living living happily down there. Septic tank. Riding gators in your septic tank. Okay, keep going. I interrupted you. I'm sorry. Oh, that the end. Oh. There are alligators in the sewers, but not as many as you think. And they're not um, you know, lab toxic injected alligators. Most of them are quite small, and most of them are discarded pets because people cannot resist a good ad. Uh, appealing to all about genuine live baby alligators. Did they think they were going to like stay the same size of the tank you put them in, kind of like a fish or something, like one of those situations? Like people who buy like mini pigs and they're like, it's going to be tiny teacup pig. But in reality, they're like 60 pounds or more. Okay, there's that. But a teacup Mm -hmm. pig, well, pigs will eat you if you're dead. It is not like a predator that will bite a chunk out of your like <laughs> intestine, right? Like it Good is. Good point. Not- yeah. Even a baby alligator can really bite. Oh, they can a do hand. some damage. Yeah, like were the parents who approve this being like they're <laughs> probably going to kill it before it grows old anyway? So like, sure or Maybe. something or. I just don't let no. If it was me and I was a kid and I wanted this one dollar and fifty cent baby alligator, I'm ordering that without parental. And that's why they got flushed. They're like, oh hell no. Exactly. One hundred percent. It's all the parents out there. We can blame them for this alligator situation. So we can confirm that the urban legend of have you you know you've heard of rats coming up through the toilets and stuff <gasps> like that yes that's actually true that does happen that is a nightmare all, all of these are almost everything they're you know what if you hear uh, the urban legend i think it's just fact i think it actually happened and it's that it's, that's what makes an urban legend it's why it's a legend because who had that happen katie 
number one fan of the podcast. I thought she had. Oh, she did. Uh, like, talk it about may not have been a, a rat. Something it was like up a, the toilet. Something came up her toilet that was not supposed to be in her toilet. No, it was like a squirrel or a chipmunk or something. Yeah. Maybe a snake. It could have been a snake. All. I think it was a snake. It's just a, you never know what you're going to get when you open that toilet lid. There's a whole menagerie that could be coming up there. Um, but then, yeah, uh, Mitch has just recently experienced the whole rat coming up through the sewer lines back in Rochester when he was there recently. So very it's real. Happening. It does happen. Ooh. Man. <laughs> If you listeners have an urban legend that you have from your childhood that you would like to share, it doesn't even have to be one that's like happened to you. If it's something that you heard around a campfire from your older sibling, from a parent who is trying to scare you straight. No, that's not a good word. From a parent who is trying to scare you from wandering too far from home. Please write us in. Brit. So apparently, yeah. I think we started our own urban legend. What? Oh, which one? Over at the old Warehouser Mill with our seance. <gasps> apparently. Really? That story, the story of our encounter, the river rat coming up on the, the Ouija board has been living on. <laughs> they tell that story over there at the old Warehouser Mill. When well, Twin you Peaks. said, yes, so, I love it. So start your own urban legend. Mm -hmm. That. Yes. If you don't have one, start one. And then hope, hope maybe I'll get back around to us in 20 years and we'll tell it on the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> right. But you can send those into our hot box at skeletalespodcast at gmail.com or you can call us on our hotline. 302-689-DEAD, 302-689-3323. Um, we are on all the socials. You can send us DMs over there. That means direct message for my mom who's listening. Oh, what did she think it meant? <laughs> I don't okay. know. <laughs> um, so you said Alyssa, can I show you what is going up in the merch shop this week? It will be in the merch shop by the time this episode airs. I'm going to show yeah. you. You ready? Uh, it is scary. It is too scary. How are you even sitting with that in the dim room? I swear to God, that's why you've been choking through the whole episode. I've been, I'm lit. I'm half alive right now. I've been coughing my she lungs. She is scary. Out of my there mouth. is no way that's not haunted. Oh, I let me tell you this story. So I got this at an estate. We sale. should describe it. Um. Oh yeah. Nobody knows what I just showed you. <laughs> <laughs> this is a ceramic statue of. Um, actually, I researched it. It's the Our Lady Fa Fatima. Is that yeah, Our Lady of Fatima. Fatima. Um, Fatima yeah. And she is ghostly white, and she is holding her hands up in the prayer uh, pose, except her hair hands are busted off. And the creepiest part is that she has no eyes. They're yes. just hollow gaping holes where really her creepy. eyes should be and i was thinking maybe it, this was a lamp like somebody wanted to put a glowing That's light was... there's no place to put a light there's a tiny hole in top which of is head. a tragedy because you need to pop a red light in there and make those Why eyes glow does and she then not have eyes it would also come out through her hands like it would be the creep i'm oh i love it but i hate it but i love it so I'm at an estate sale and I'm walking, you have to walk through the garage to get to the back area where more stuff is. And I see her and I'm like, oh, no, no. And I walk around, I gather my tchotchkes that I love at the estate sales and I'm walking back and I'm looking at her in the garage where I'm about to check out. And a, a rack of clothes that was right by me falls over i didn't touch it it just fell over right next to me and i pulled my hands up and i was like i didn't do it i promise and they're just like oh that thing that's you know can happen it hasn't happened before but you know whatever <laughs> i'm sure you, <laughs> and i was like staring and i was like and then i sent Alyssa a text with a photo and i was like is this too scary for this shop and she says get it and i was like damn it so i 
I got her. I brought her home and I'm regretting every single second. If you are into she's creepy aesthetic, I have to turn her around right now. the creepiest. She is very, very, very creepy. Regardless, if you want to see her, she's in her Etsy shop. Did you um, say you researched her? Oh, because she's just a a Lady bit. of Fatima. Got it. Sorry. Yeah. You figured out yeah. who she was. I, I understand. Just to find out who she was. She's yeah. a Virgin Mary statue. Did you say that? Or did you just say Lady well, of Fatima? Well, I just said, is the Lady Fatima of not, is, that's Virgin Mary, right? Yeah, it or, is. I I just, don't, uh, I'm not Catholic. You have to I know tell you're me. not Catholic. I th- I knew who it was, but I don't know if everybody else knows who Lady of Fatima Lady is. Lady Fatima what if pic- is, she is Virgin some, Mary? Like, yes, that's the Virgin Mary. And she appeared. Why is she called Lady Fatima? I want to say Lady of Fatima appeared to some children in Yugoslavia repeatedly. I might be wrong about that. I don't know. And oh, was, it was it's a verified. And so this miracle. is very specific. It was like in the eighties statue. Oh wow, that's Could have fascinating. Been that recent. Well, this this statue is from at least the fifties. Confirmed. Oh, it was in per- Portugal, and it was in 1917. Really close. Okay. <laughs> okay. Close enough. She appeared to some children. Um, <sighs> she is creepy. Very creepy. I wonder if that's what she looked like when she appeared to the kids. And <laughs> run away! Regardless, uh, we love Virgin Mary. She's great. I love you. Don't kill me, please. <laughs> Also, head on over to Patreon, Skeletal's podcast on Patreon. We are posting up fresh videos, fresh stories. If you want to catch some of our older episodes, those are on over there. And uh, you can join for as little as $1 a month, and that helps support our show and keep this going. Heck yeah, it does. Um, did we already talk about our social networks? Our yeah, s- yeah. social media so. accounts? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, we're good. Okay. Was there anything else, Alyssa? Oh, shit. There was one more thing, Brett. I got I'll haunt you later. Haunt y'all later. Good night. Good night. <laughs>